Hello, YouTube community. It is I, your favorite apostate, and on to two, here once again, exposing Watchtower inconsistency <coughs> and freeing you from the prison of your very own minds. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses, you are undoubtedly able to discern from the title of this video that I have yet another question for you. You see, I am one of the mentally diseased ones. I have an inability to understand the deeper truths of the Bible, and also an incapability of discerning the value of Watchtower doctrine. And so it is for this reason that occasionally I call, a, call upon scholars such as yourselves to answer the questions that I may have. That being said, the questions that I have this evening have to do with the nature of the faithful and discreet slave and their use in formulating Watchtower doctrine, even according to Watchtower's own standards. That being said, allow me to quote to you a excerpt from the 11-1-2007 issue of the Watchtower, page 30 and then paragraph 13. It says this, Just as all members of ancient Israel formed one servant, so also all anointed Christians on earth at any one time form one faithful and discreet slave. Oh my, that's rather important. Allow me to read it to you again in slow motion. All anointed Christians on earth at any one time form one faithful and discreet slave. Aha! So according to the Watchtower, it's all the anointed on earth that form the faithful and discreet slave. Here are my questions. If that is the case, then why is it that only a select few of the anointed are actually involved in matters of doctrine? Why are only they involved in feeding of the sheep? And of course, by they, I mean the governing body. A select chosen of, what, what is it, about nine? Nine? Maybe more, maybe less men? That represent the interests of the faithful and discreet slave class? Well, that's not what the Watchtower says they are. Curiouser and curiouser. Now, granted, it could just be a logistical issue, and it may not be entirely reasonable to expect that all anointed are to be involved in the spiritual food production process, even though that's what the Watchtower says they are. Uh, it may not be reasonable. So why is it that the writing committees in the various Bethel branches are staffed by majority great crowd professors, people who claim that they are not anointed, people who expressly uh, confess that they hope their hope is an earthly one. Why is it that they're not staffed by majority anointed people? Curiouser and curiouser. And then lastly, why is it that the anointed, if they in do, in do in fact need a representative for their interest, why is it that the anointed are not consulted in any way, shape, form, or manner in electing these representatives, why is it a self-appointed body? Shouldn't the anointed across the world at least be involved in the selection of their representatives? My, it does confuse mentally diseased ones such as myself. It stumbles us, to be frank. Yes, it does. So again, Jehovah's Witnesses, my questions are basically this. Why is it that the anointed are not involved in the spiritual food production process and are only represented, represented by nine select men? Why are the writing committees staffed by majority great crowd when even according to the Watchtower, the anointed are the ones who are supposed to be responsible for this spiritual food? And then also, why do the anointed have no say when it comes to choosing their representatives despite the fact that the Bible provides no scriptural basis for the existence of such representatives. Now, regardless of whether you choose to answer my questions or not, I will leave you with a statement that I always do. Life is a state of mind. I look forward to hearing the response from scholars such as yourselves. High intellectuals is what you are. Yes, yes indeed. Ah, comments